A while ago, Mark Andreessen of Andreessen and Horowitz Venture Capital said that software is eating the world, correctly predicting what we have experienced in the past decade. More recently this year, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Chase Bank, said that payments are eating the world to symbolize the vast innovation and in business that is happening in digitizing money. I've been working in the fintech world for the past two years as a software engineer in two different startups in New York City, and I've experienced this firsthand. In this video, I'm going to talk about first, what is fintech and what jobs exist in it, along with the compensation and so on, the disruption and trends that we are going to see according to Chase Bank, and lastly, a few stories from my experience working in fintech companies so far. Fintech companies like Venmo allow us to transfer money instantly or even build online businesses that are powered by Shopify and even trade financial securities using only our phone through Robinhood. In the past, doing any of these took a lot of time and effort, but today you can do all of that from the comfort of your home without waiting weeks or days for a response from the bank or a government agency. Fintech companies hire for a large variety of jobs, and many of those exist in other niches and industries as well. However, the difference is that in fintech, you will be acquiring its specific domain knowledge. Depending on the specific company or product, you might end up learning deeply about the back office processes of equity trading in companies that relate to trading such as TD Ameritrade and Fidelity, and even payroll and tax filing obligations of businesses to the IRS in companies such as Rippling and JustWorks. Just to name a few common jobs in fintech, there are software engineers that are responsible for building products, operation managers that ensure that the business's processes run smoothly, compliance officers that make sure that the business does not violate any regulations, and product managers that are subject matter experts for the business's service or product. And if you're interested in learning more about fintech jobs, make sure to check the video that I will link at the end where I rank the top fintech jobs based on compensation and other criteria. Now, in terms of compensation in general in the field, it highly depends on the company location and the job, but because fintech companies usually tend to be well-funded, the compensation will be competitive compared to other fields, especially for roles that require technical expertise or in leadership positions. On the other hand, the work-life balance will likely not be looking that much better than the average, since the nature of the role means that you will be often responsible for people's or other businesses' money. If you ask yourself why fintech has been really booming in the past decade as compared to before, it all has to do with the fact that it's only in the past several years that smartphones and high-speed internet access became ubiquitous rather than the staple of the upper middle class. And also the fact that we are trusting these devices with our personal information and finances. And this brings us to Chase Bank's report, where they lay out a framework for the technology and the markets that are fueled by the innovation in fintech, which then they break down to multiple themes. First, they highlight the shift in global retail sales to online, and specifically to online marketplaces rather than proprietary shops. At this point, it would be safe to assume that at least most of us ordered something online from Amazon, and since the pandemic, more online marketplaces became popular even for groceries and clothes shopping. One visible trend that has seen some amount of retraction is remote work. However, according to Chase Bank's report, the gig economy, which basically means freelancers and consultants that work from their home or some beach in Bali, has not only grown in the past several years, but it is expected to grow even more since that is becoming a more popular form of employment. And also, these payment apps and platforms allow for them to be paid from anywhere. On the same note, Chase mentions the creator economy and how the GDP of social media such as YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and other social media platforms rose to hundreds of billions of dollars from individuals that are monetizing themselves and making a living through sponsorships and revenue streams other than their W-2 paychecks. So personally, that's something that I've realized that some do. And after trying to build a SaaS business and even niche websites without feeling like that could be something I could commit to for years, I've decided to build this YouTube channel since I have some experience that some might find valuable. And also because this is a creative outlet for me in contrast to my day job in engineering. The report continues to talk about cryptocurrencies 
and new banks which are online banks like Chime which I've covered in this video and other trends that are popular in our generation such as the use of buy now pay later services. As a summary, other than the general knowledge of where fintech is headed and the general job possibilities that might come from that, Chase Bank's report highlights growing markets within fintech that I would take into account when option trading fintech companies. Knowing that with the growth trajectory, the fundamentals of a business, its revenue and profit will also be expected to grow, which would make me less afraid of holding on a stock if and when I get assigned. To give you more concrete examples to what it's like to work in fintech, a project that I worked on was building a system that connects to DTC, which is the Depository Trust Corporation, which is the actual holder of US equities and the source of truth when it comes to which person holds what stock. So when you buy an Apple stock on Robinhood, Robinhood as the broker will have an account on your behalf with the DTC. So they're brokering between you and the DTC. And that will have a record indicating what stocks you own. And whenever you trade or your positions change, that will be reflected in the DTC's database. So the system that I built would pull the records of my company's customers every morning such that it could facilitate different services that the company can provide, such as stock lending, that would help it generate revenue through commissions. Another example for a project that I worked on in my current company relates to documents that businesses need to file to the IRS annually. The system that I built would file these documents electronically in bulk to make it faster, simpler, and less prone to human error. Now, all of this is from the perspective of a software engineer. Different roles obviously will look different. While engineers are focused on building, a product manager, for example, in the DTC project will be responsible for understanding the specifications of connecting to DTC and pulling files from it, becoming a subject matter expert of this, and also correctly prioritizing the different tasks that it takes to build this system from its very first version, all the way through to testing until it's production ready and then shipping it. Regardless of the role and what you will be doing, if you're interested in the types of problems and markets that the report described, and in doing somewhat similar work to the two concrete examples that I gave you, then the fintech domain might be a good fit for you. The good news are that there are many fintech companies that are hiring, and I've created a video that ranks the top 10 jobs in fintech from my personal experience, so you can check that in the next video in case you want to learn more about the different roles and what they do. Finally, please share in the comments below what do you think about the opinions expressed in the report, and also whether you're interested or not in working in fintech. Thank you for watching. Bye.